JWST has turned its gaze to our closest planetary neighbour, Mars. It sent back both images and a spectrum of the red planet, which were captured on September 5th, 2022. So let's take a look at exactly what it saw. Of all of the things that JWST can safely observe without blowing out its detectors, Mars is pretty much the closest possible, meaning that it's one of the brightest things that JWST will ever be pointed at. From L2, where Webb orbits a point in space almost a million miles from Earth, it can see a portion of Mars called its observable disk. It's the part of the planet that's sunlit and facing the telescope. Looking at this disk, and because it's so close to Earth, Webb can even take images with high enough resolution to study short-term features and phenomena, including dust storms, seasonal changes, and weather patterns. The incredible brightness of the planet does pose challenges though, since the telescope is incredibly sensitive and designed to also image the faintest, most distant galaxies in the universe. So it has to be careful when looking at Mars not to destroy its own instruments by letting in too much light. The bright infrared light from Mars can cause the detectors to become saturated. To combat this, JWST only takes incredibly short exposures of the planet and then combines lots of these observations to create the images we see. These images were both taken by the NERCAM instrument in near infrared light and show the eastern hemisphere of the planet. On the left, we just see a reference image taken by MOLA, the Mars Orbiter Laser Altimeter, and on the right, we see the two different wavelength images of Mars from JWST. The top right is the shorter wavelength of the two at 2.1 microns and shows the same area as that boxed on the left. This image reveals surface details similarly to the image on the left, but it's also dominated by reflected sunlight. We can see Certis Major, which is a low relief shield volcano whose dark color comes from the basaltic volcanic rock that makes it up. We can also see the rings of the Huygens crater here and a brighter area known as Heller's Basin, which is one of the largest known craters in the entire solar system. In the longer 4.3 micron wavelength image below, we see the entire hemisphere's thermal emission given off as the planet loses heat. The incredibly bright yellow areas are where the detector has reached its saturation limit and is blowing out. And this shows us the hottest areas of the planet and its thin atmosphere. Here, this is the hottest place because the sun was directly overhead and it's so bright that every pixel is surrounded by a diffraction spike. You can see that closer to the poles, the brightness decreases simply because these areas typically receive less sunlight. And indeed, the northern part is less bright than the southern hemisphere because when this image was taken, it was winter in the north. I guess the Starks really are always right eventually. Winter is coming. It's not just temperature that affects the brightness though, but the atmosphere also plays a part as the light must travel through the atmosphere to reach Webb. Lots of the light that would be visible in the 4.3 micron image can be absorbed by carbon dioxide in the atmosphere before it ever reaches us. So areas with lots of atmospheric CO2 will look darker in this image. That's exactly why Heller's Basin looks darker in this image. It's not a thermal effect of the huge crater, but rather an atmospheric one. Since the basin is a crater, it's at a lower altitude than the surrounding areas, so it experiences a higher air pressure. This leads to more absorption of certain wavelengths of light, including the one we're looking at in this image. And hence, this area looks darker because we're receiving less light. Talking of the atmosphere, let's also look at the spectrum we received from Mars. This was created by looking at light from all over the planet, breaking that light down into its separate wavelengths and looking at how much light we receive in each of those wavelengths. I have a video that goes into the details of exactly how this works, including a demonstration using special lamps, which I'll link at the top of the video now, in the description and at the end of the video too, if you're interested. Basically, the higher the line is at a certain point, the more of that wavelength of light we saw and big dips in the line can tell us exactly what elements make up the atmosphere and the planet's surface. We really saw that Mars is definitely full of lots of gases that would be toxic to us, like the aforementioned carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide too. We also saw features in the spectrum that tells us water. Presumably water vapor is also present in the atmosphere. And it's always interesting to hear the words water and Mars in the same sentence. With further analysis, because all of this is very preliminary at the moment, 
This can tell us about exactly what kind of rocks are on the planet's surface, what makes up its icy clouds, the composition of the atmosphere, and of course, the most important question on everyone's lips, what is Martian dust made of? In the future, more observations and spectra will let the Mars team study regional differences across the planet. And for now, this is just a tease of all the exciting Martian data we'll see from Webb. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye.